What's going on? It's Migs with X Dynamics here with another quick video. So as creatives, we want to emulate movies and capture the smoothest and cleanest clips or what we call cinematic footage. And one way to achieve this is to have the right camera settings. And in this video, I'm going to show you guys how frame rates and shutter speeds go hand in hand and how it correlates the look and feel of your video. I'm also going to show you guys how ND filters can be beneficial in order to achieve the 180 degree rule of shutter, which I'll show you guys later on in the video. So whenever we're filming video, we always see 4K 24, 4K 60, etc. We know that 4K is the resolution of the video, but what is that 24? 24 is the frames per second or images per second. Videos are a series of images put together to perceive motion. So whenever we have 24 frames per second, we're shooting 24 photos or images, putting it together to form one second of video. So how does frame rate and shutter speeds go hand in hand and correlate with each other? We call this the 180 degree rule of shutter. What the 180 degree rule of shutter is, whenever you have your frame rate set at 24, you wanna have double that frame rate, which is 148. We don't have 148th in most cameras, so the closest we have to it is 150th. So that's what you want to set your shutter speed to. We do this because it introduces motion blur to each frame. So when you play it back, it mimics motion the way you perceive it in real life. For example, when I shake my hand in front of this camera, which is shooting at 24 frames per second at 150th shutter, you can see motion the same way you would when you shake your hand in front of your face. So this 24 frames per second and 150th shutter speed is commonly used in movies and short films, and that's why it's called the cinematic frame rate. So what happens when you set your shutter speed higher and break the 180 degree rule of shutter? Whenever your shutter speed is higher, the less motion blur is added between frames, causing your video to be jittery and look unnatural. So when do we use 60 FPS and 120 FPS? These two frame rates are used to capture slow motion. Personally, I like shooting at 60 FPS, shooting slow-mo, but if you want smoother and buttery clips, I would suggest going for the 120 frames. But as I mentioned earlier, the 180 degree rule of shutter still applies when you're shooting at these frame rates. And what's great about the Evolve 2 is that you can shoot at 120 frames per second and still keep that 4K resolution. Typically, to get great footage, you want to set your ISO to the lowest setting to minimize having artifacts or noise in your video. But what happens when you have your ISO at the lowest setting and you lower your shutter speed to double frame rate? The scene tends to be bright, and this is where ND filters come in handy. ND filters, or neutral density filters, are used to offset the amount of light hitting the sensor in order for you to darken the scene. This is really helpful when you're lowering your shutter speed because it tends to be really bright when you got those shutter speeds at the lowest settings. So to summarize, the 180 degree rule of shutter is double your frame rate. So when you're shooting at 24 FPS, you should set your shutter speed to 150th. And when you're shooting at 60 FPS, your shutter speed should be at 1 1 25th and so on. Also, it's great to have neutral density filters in your bag in order to offset the light coming into your sensor when you're shooting and aiming for that double frame rate. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you guys learned a thing or two about frame rates and shutter speeds in order to capture cinematic footage. It's Migs with X Dynamics, and I'll see you guys on the next one.